With both Quincy and Colombo in tow, we were heading across the border to Monmouth in Wales. Our destination, the near legendary Rockfield Recording Studios. Our son, Connor, would be getting married in a few weeks' time. And unbeknownst to him, his best man had organised a stay at the recording studio's main accommodation. There was also a surprise walk with some alpacas, but we'll get to that later. Oh, Connor's going to walk into a board. Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> From Queen to the Beta Band, Deep Purple to the Wedding Present, Dr. Feelgood to the Pixies, Rockfield's recording roster is more than a little impressive. We'd be staying at the Coach House, the same accommodation used by Oasis during the recording of What's the Story Morning Glory. Other famous occupants include the Stone Roses, who spent 14 months living here whilst toiling away at their troubled second album, The Second Coming. As we were the first to arrive, it seemed only fair that we'd get the pick of the rooms. It later turned out that ours was the one used by Noel Gallagher during his stay. Despite not being a huge Oasis fan, there is something quite powerful about being in a location with so much cultural significance. The first time I ever came in here was when the, the roses were recorded in the second coming. Yep. And the, thing, the other thing I remember about this room is, is the day Blackburn won the league, and it was Blackburn and United went to the last day. They had a split screen thing, and Bonehead was a United fan, and we, yep. were all, we all ended up in a fight that night as well, some City and United shit. Having said all that, I think Liam Gallagher's recollections of his stay at the coach house best sums it all up. It's like the Big Brother house, isn't it? Just fucking tunes. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool. <laughs> Who do you think records in a house like this? It's that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> about the accommodation. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I like to think that Carl McCoy stayed in our bedroom. Carl McCoy? Yeah. Out of all the people, yeah. Carl McCoy. Yeah. In our bedroom. Right, you know, in our bedroom. In our bedroom. He probably yeah. practiced looking into the mirror. Yeah, that no, was pretty good. I mean, you know. He was the studio. Use your left foot. No effort. Is this what Oasis did, do you think? <laughs> this is what led to the cricket bat incident. The cricket bat incident is in reference to a fight which broke out between Liam and Noel during their stay here. Liam brandishing one of Noel's guitars before being set upon by Noel with the aforementioned bat. The bat in question is now a collector's item. We were driving through like a really impoverished area of Bristol and uh, I was in the front seat of the van with a fucking crown on. <laughs> I looked like a right cunt. Hello. Evening saw us trekking into Monmouth for a pint or two. It was then that Isaac insisted on sharing his ape impression. So, Connor didn't know what a cattle grid was. I, I've seen one now. That's Parental fail. <laughs> take it all in. That's it. That's the take. Okay. There isn't any uh, public for that side. No, there is
excited for the day? Yep. Do you know what's going on? No. No idea. So explain what you're doing. Thank you. Why? It's a good meme. It's a good meme. It's a good meme. It's <laughs> the meme. They're killing after you. It's happening. Now, what do you think? Sorry. Should we run up now? I think so. <laughs> After a hearty breakfast and with Connor still very much in the dark, we clambered onto the bus and made our way to the next part of the stag weekend. Are you surprised? Okay. I'm surprised. Okay, what do you think? <laughs> Louis, where are your excitement levels for this? Oh, they're pretty high. Pretty high, is that a 10? <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm very excited yeah. about the alpacas. Yeah. yeah. They're dirty with the alpacas. <laughs> I like the haircuts too. They've got, they've got good hair. Okay. This is Lexus. Okay. Lexus. Thank you. Right. You happy with that, Ryan? Whoa, Teddy. Whoa, Teddy. <laughs> Doing it with an alpaca is uh, top tier comedy. What, what, what have you got there, Louis? This is Noah. 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 Yeah. Of course it is. Isaac's got the cool alpaca. Will's not got an alpaca yet. <laughs> My man. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's <laughs> he good. looks so worried. Yeah, nice. You having a good time, Khan? I'm having the best time. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, amazing. Yeah, it was you had a, really, a good time. A really good time, yeah. Um, mine was a bit feisty at the end, but it was uh, good at the end. Yeah. It was at this point in the proceedings where things started to look more than a little similar to a certain Beach Boys album cover. Yeah, uh, walked out Packers, met Ted, he's in there somewhere. Yeah. Um, uh, he was unruly, but lovable. Yeah. Sweet. Good heart. time was had. Yeah, good time was had. Fed him. Yeah. Uh, a little sit down. Sure. Uh, I think we're going to go drink now. Nice. Bang. Okay, that's not how Gordon does it. Has he nailed it? Oh yeah. Yeah. He's totally nailed that. 
intrigued. I'm sure it'll be a great success this time. Yeah. Now I'm videoing it. No, I can't Have do you it. see it from this angle? It goes into a spiral. <laughs> so not successful when you did it either. No, this trick, uh, I, it's shit. Zero out of ten. Zero out of ten. Uh, <laughs> Our first stop on the studio tour was the Quadrangle. Queen put together two albums here, and probably most importantly, this was where Bohemian Rhapsody was recorded. Bands were invited to graffiti their name above this couch. Bridget quite rightly took umbrage with one or two of their choices. Mood bungalow, that's a shit name for a band, isn't it? <laughs> I apologise if you have been or were a member of Mood Bungalow. I cannot remember. Try it. Try it. Come in. I need to go check this out as well. Got these extra bass notes. You lift this little. Oh, it's, like, oh, yeah, yeah. it's like a James Bond piano. Yes, yeah, it's an extender. <laughs> it's a piano that goes all the way up to eleven. Why don't you just make ten louder and make ten be the top number and make that a little louder? These go to eleven. <laughs> On a personal note, the studio was where the late great Steve Albini worked when producing the Manic Street Preacher's ninth album. <laughs> Suffering from a heart attack at 61 earlier this year, Albini was nothing short of a genius, a producer who left his indelible stamp on nearly everything he worked on. From the Pixies' Surfer Rosa to PJ Harvey's Rid of Me to the wedding present Sea Monsters, his influence and talent are undeniable and he will surely be missed. So, I have Steve Albini having fun on video, with a smile on his face. I thought I could go out fun. Yay! Feelgood's first record was done oh, in the Coach House. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Taught you how to play guitar. There's yeah. a really cool <laughs> Dr. Feelgood sticker there that they would have stuck on there in the 70s. Oh, oh, that's that's been so cool. Cool. Your guitar teacher played. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Feelgood. Oh, there you go. I actually yeah. worked with Wilco Johnson a few years ago. Oh, no, no, nice. Wilco yeah, Johnson's yeah, like literally yeah. yeah. my hero. Yeah. So. Crazy, crazy looking that whole bit for money, isn't it? Yeah, so that's the old, yeah, Phillips. You never know it's making music, would you? <laughs> <laughs> what are the patch bays for? Are they literally for sends and oh, returns? Or, yeah. No, so that's, that's, that's the, those are tweakers, you get a tool in that thing, you roll up the machine. Oh shit, so you so can actually have to do it by screw, essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck. <laughs> 
Oh, so they're just expecting a lower game in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a hot line Both the Quadrangle and the Coach House Studio have access to three purpose-built echo chambers. Needless to say, we couldn't help but put our vocal talents to use. Because there's more of us in, you get less of a bet, but... But there's a few of them. I could hear it when Connor first came in. Like, ah! That's crazy, I want to... Wait, if you were... <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird. Yeah. It's surreal. What did you go for? Nice. We'd be spending most of our evening in the smaller of the two studios. This studio was where Oasis had recorded their second album, What's the Story Morning Glory. Again, putting aside any personal feelings about the band themselves, it was strange to be occupying a space where so much seminal music had been recorded. I can segue beautifully into the clip here, you see, so. Slowly walking down the hall, faster than a cannonball. Where were you while we were getting After a night of raucous jamming, everyone was pretty slow to start the next morning. But before leaving, there was one more pilgrimage that we had to make, and it concerned possibly Oasis' most famous song. And I remember saying to Owen, I've got this song called Wonderwall, I want to record it on a, on a, wa on a wall. Yeah. So, yeah, there it is, the Wonderwall. Physical evidence. <laughs> It had been an amazing couple of days, and we thank everyone that made it possible, particularly the staff at Rockfield themselves, who had to put up with two rather angry, yappy dogs, amongst other things. Sharing the space previously occupied by so many great musicians had really been an experience, and one that we can wholeheartedly recommend.
That's a wrap. That's a wrap.